Hello Church, thank you so much for tuning in to ICC Kitengela, a place of connection and transformation to experience God's love. I now hand you over to Nelly to kickstart out this week's family news on this beautiful Sunday. We start off with some good news for the people in the business world, particularly the small medium enterprises, and would like to showcase their products and services. Well, ICC Kitengela will be hosting a business fair on the 16th of October 2022. If you're interested, kindly register by the numbers running on your screen. Still in the business world, if you're struggling to push your business into the next level or you have just started your business and are not sure whether you have tapped into the right market, worry no more because we have Marketplace Trading every Thursday at 8 p.m. via Zoom. For registration, reach us via the number on the screen. Tell me, how long do you take to worship God when you come to church? 5, 10, 15 minutes? As you think about that, imagine seven hours of nothing but pure worship straight from the heart. Sounds interesting, right? To make it more interesting, we as ICC Kitengela are about to change that imagination into a reality on the 30th of October 2022, starting from 8 a.m. all the way to 3 p.m. Seven hours of worship experience. This experience will be led by our very own ICC Kitengela and they will be backed by our brothers and sisters from ICC Nairobi together with Young in Christ Band. The theme of the experience is with all my heart. Invite your friends, your relatives, your neighbors to come and be part of this great experience as we worship God with all our hearts. And now we are ready for the service. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come for you today this time. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of being here today to listen to your word. We pray that you may please bless us in whatever we may partake from this word, Jehovah God. May it be our guide throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Enjoy the service. Lift up your hands and worship him from your heart. Because of who he is, Father, we bless you. Speak unto him, tell him, Father, I love you. I love you. Lord, you're worthy, Lord. I bless your name, Lord. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do You never fail You never change You're faithful to the end Faithful God I worship you I worship you Let me say You're who you are Lord You are who you are
praise. We have come to adore your name, Jesus. You deserve the glory, Jesus. Your word, Lord, your word, Jesus. There's no other God beside you, Jesus. You alone are worthy. Lord Jesus, you are Our Father and our God, we praise you for you are worthy of all our worship. You are worthy of all our praise and you are worthy of all our sacrifices. This morning, our God, we thank you because you love us with an everlasting love and your plan for us, your plan for your church is a plan for good, to do us good and to keep your promises. We thank you for the work that you started in our hearts and we thank you that you're a God who will complete accomplish everything that you have said you would do through your people and in your life. And for this, Lord, we thank you that you're building your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We thank you for the love that you continue to show us. We thank you for your mercy that continue to be availed upon us each and every day. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving this day and we come to praise you. We come to worship you. Lord, even as we sit to hear your word, I pray that our hearts will be open to listen to you and to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we give thanks. Amen. Thank you again for joining us on our online church. And it's good to have you. We have been on a journey on the book of Joshua. And today we look at the book of Joshua chapter 6. And in this, just a brief overview, the children of Israel now have crossed Jordan and they are faced with one city that is very critical for their conquest. And this is the city of Jericho. And God has prepared, because remember from the onset, God has, is in this story. And God is with the children of Israel and they have to accomplish their path as God has ordained for them. So Jericho is such a fortified city, so fortified that if they conquer Jericho, then it will be an encouragement to them that the journey they have already started and the miracle they have seen of God walking with them continues. The grace of God and the heart of God will be upon them. And so God is going to give them very special instruction Remember, we have seen before that they have closed with all their men and their tribes of war, well armed and well ready to go and uh, take the conquest. But apparently, as much as they may be looking at Jericho and wondering how they will conquer, God has a different design, a different way of giving them victory. And so let's turn to the book of Joshua and read this story and see what God uh, how God is going to position them and how God is fighting this battle so that they may know that he's the mighty man of war. And in Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out, no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of lambs horn in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with priests blowing the trumpet. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpet, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the city will go up, every man straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the people advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpet before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpet, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. Verse 11. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, 
circling it once. Then the people returned to the camp, spent the night there. Joshua got up early in the next morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord, while the trumpet kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time that around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given us the city. The city and all that is in it are to be defined to the Lord, only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. And the silver and the gold, and the articles of bronze and iron as sacred to the Lord and must go into his sanctuary. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted at the sound of the trumpet. When the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword, every living thing. In it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkey. We move on to verse 27. The Bible says, So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. So we are going to look at the strategy for victory. So point number one is that God, what is God saying to them? And we see this from the first two, from first two to first five. We see the Lord speaking to Joshua. The Bible says, now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out, no one came in. Remember that we have seen before that these people were so terrified and their hearts were melting in fear. I don't know whether you've ever been to a place where you are not able to move because of scare, or you're not able to move because you do not know what to expect. And they feared so much that they couldn't even get out of the city. They now did not know this God who has separated the waters of a flooded Jordan, what is he going to do? And they have seen the children of Israel have already crossed over and they are well armed. But then the Bible continues to say, the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hearts along with its kings and its men. Strategy for victory. God is speaking to Joshua. And God is telling Joshua, open your eyes. What Joshua is hearing is that let your vision, let your eyes see. The Bible says, see, I have delivered Jericho. See, I have. This statement shows that he, the war is already won. And Joshua has to see the end. He has to see the victory. So the Lord is calling him to see. So Joshua has to hear. He is listening to what God is saying. And I do not know. In this, what is God saying? God is telling Joshua, see. For you and for me, what do we see? What do we hear? Joshua needed to see that the, the city had been de delivered in his hearts. Not only the city, together with the kings. Not only with the kings, even with its fighting men. So the men of war, the whole security team of Jericho, was already in Joshua's heart. In the physical, when Joshua looks, he's seeing a fortified city. But the Lord has spoken. 
and this makes a big difference. When the Lord has spoken, it changes what we see. Even though in the physical we may see walls, it meant that Joshua needed to see the walls had already come down. And he needed to see that Jericho had been delivered in his hearts. So the strategy of God is very amazing. And in this one, we see that there was this major obstacle ahead of them. But the Lord is saying, now I don't want you to see the obstacle. I want you to see the victory. So what does that mean for me and you? What is the obstacle that is ahead of you? What are the things that sometimes causes us not to see God? Causes us not to see in faith? So in this instance, Joshua is being called to step in the place of faith. And the work of life, the work of a Christian, is the work of faith. So God is calling us to walk in faith and to hear him. That means we have to be attentive to his voice. We have to tune our ears to hear God always and to hear what he's saying. And when God tells Joshua, see, I have delivered. Then Joshua has to see the end of the battle won. And he has to walk with that in mind. He has to march forward with that in mind. The second thing is that the, the Lord is asking him to do something. After he has heard God, the second thing is, what is God asking? And I want you to hear me well. God is asking Joshua something. What is God asking him to do? In verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. So Joshua has to do something. This is what we call obedience. What is God asking Joshua? He is asking Joshua to obey the instructions given. In our day today, for me and you, there will be times, and there are always times. Every day, we are faced with an opportunity where God is asking for obedience. So God uh, was seeking for obedience, and therefore Joshua now has to receive the instruction and order the people to walk with the instructions given. Joshua needed to comply with the plan God had. When we hear God, it changes our move. When we hear God and we choose to obey, remember obedience is better than sacrifice. So God is asking Joshua to obey. And Joshua is going to put people together and they are going to advance as they march through the city. That means in this one, it is not the warriors. It is not the security people. It is not the military people that are going ahead. Remember, Joshua was the commander of the army. And I can imagine that the army is also waiting to hear what their commander is going to instruct them. I can imagine they are already well armed because we saw that even when they were closing the Jordan, they were aware that they were coming for battle. And here they are. And they have to begin by conquering Jericho. But then the instruction is the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of the Lord. The seven priests have to walk ahead of them with the trumpet. These were the trumpets of worship. They were not the trumpet of war. They were the trumpets of worship. So they are going ahead and they are going through the city once every day for six days. Once every day for six days. The third thing, so here their obedience is being tested. The third thing that we see that is the strategy for victory is they have to endure these six days. They have to do the same thing. They have to do the same thing every day and come back. The army are behind them and they are walking through this journey and they are coming back and they are sleeping. Many times when we go through situation, God is testing our endurance. 
So they needed to follow the instruction, remember, that is obedience. Remember Joshua needed to hear God initially. That is listening clearly to the instruction God is giving you. And then obeying and being able to pursue that what you have seen by faith. And now, uh, because they had seen by faith, they needed also to obey God and to do exactly what God had asked them. And in verse 15, on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. So whatever they were used to, and many times we can get so used to God, we can be get used so much used to reading the scripture, we can get so much used to prayer, and we think these are strategies that do not work. The children of Israel possibly got there. But I want to remind you that as much as they did, they did not allow discouragement to check in. They waited on God. They endured. They followed the instruction in your life and in my life. God requires that we follow instruction on a day-to-day -day basis. And when we follow and wait on God, and trust in the Lord. We are not trusting in the arm of flesh. We are trusting in one who is mighty and powerful. And it does not matter how long he may keep or how long it may take. If God has spoken, if God has said, if God has promised, he is faithful. He is not man that he will lie. So he will keep his word. All he's asking is for me and you to endure. And many times we may fail this test. But as for the children of Israel, they ensured that they didn't fail the test. So I don't know what your six days mean. I don't know what is the length of the time that you may say you have been waiting on the Lord. But I hear the Lord encouraging you and me to continue waiting on him. And to know that he is faithful. That what he has spoken, he will bring it to pass. Now the seventh day has come. And this is the day of the miracle because now when we read the scripture, we know that this is the day that the Lord is going to nail, to nail it home. There will be a day for you that the Lord will nail it home. And when we are tested to endure, brother, sister, may we be found faithful in our endurance. The Bible says they went seven times in the same manner, except that this day they circled it seven times, and the seventh time allowed when the priest sounded the blast. So at the seventh walk around, the city, the seventh time. Joshua commanded the army. And now I want you to see that the army is waiting for their commander and something very different happens. They are well armed and they have worked for these six days and for the seventh time, seventh time, seventh day, seventh time. And they are possibly waiting to hear, go through the door or go through the gates. But then, Joshua shouted and says, shout. So they have their armor, yes, but God is calling them to shout. And this is the shout of victory. Many times we may have our plans. No wonder the Bible says in the Proverbs 3, 6, and 7 that we do not lean in our, on our own understanding. Because when we lean in our own understanding, we can be shortchanged of victory. When we are not listening to God and walking in obedience and enduring to the end, we may miss the mark. If they did not hear Joshua saying that it is now time to shout and they did something different, victory would not have come home. So we need to hear God from the beginning. We need to hear God as we go along with our walk of faith and we need to hear God to the end. So in the place of victory and the place of war. One thing is that we need to be encouraged that God has already won the battle. Jesus Christ endured for us. He got the victory of a death and he said it is done. Victory is ours already. So we walk this walk of faith from the place of victory. And now we are walking like Joshua is being told, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Whatever it is that you're walking through, the Lord has already delivered Jericho into your hands. And now you're walking in the victory of the Lord, but we have to hear him. 
well. So Joshua says, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. That hour, just as God had promised Joshua when he initially spoke to him, just as God, God had promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all of them had been promised that they will get to the promised land. And now the hour is here that they have to conquer Jericho. And the minute they conquer Jericho, then they can continue to go forth to get into their promised land. And Joshua says, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. That is called endurance. What is it that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis? What is your Jericho? How are you marching? How am I marching on a day to day? Many times it can get tiring. Many times it can become monotonous. Going to the fellowship, hearing the same word, going through the Bible studies and going through the scriptures you have read over the years. But I want to say, let's keep marching. Let's keep enduring because at the end of it, the Lord is going to bring victory home. Their obedience to God produced victory. We may have been faced with challenges. I want you to be encouraged. Keep enduring. Keep your faith. Fight to the end. Hold on to God. Hold on to his promises. Do not allow discouragement to check in. Do not allow disbelief to check in. Do not allow any negative thought to wage war against you to a point that you do not continue your march. That what seemed so impossible, so uncommon, and possibly they kept wondering, how will the walls come down? This Joshua, did he really hear God well? That what seemed uncommon, God won't see it. In the walk of faith, many things are beyond our comprehension. But if we walk by faith and we put our trust in the Lord, because faith is saying, God, I hear you. I hear what your word is saying. That obedience, walking in obedience means we are saying, God, we trust in you. And finally, the strategy for war is also where is your faith anchored? In this whole journey, God is helping the children of Israel to anchor their faith in him. And in this, he's going to help them to have confidence in God. When you're faced with situation and with challenges in life, the Lord is testing how and where our faith is anchored. On what have you anchored your faith? Where is your faith anchored? God wanted them to anchor their faith in his instruction. And even today, the instructions of the Lord are the same. I pray that the strength of the Lord will be upon you and upon me as we walk this faith. Because the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, in the book of Isaiah 40, verse 30, they are strengthened. I pray that the Lord will strengthen your faith in him, and that you will, your confidence will be built in the Lord. The children of Israel were faced with a fortified city. It seemed very impossible to walk around it and to come home every day. It seemed like they were not making any gain. But remember the Lord was in every step that they made. I want to encourage you that the Lord in every step that we make when we walk in faith and the things that may seem impossible, the Lord will bring them to pass and the Lord will give you victory. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted that what was looking impossible, the walls came down at a shout. The walls came troubling down. Sometimes the wall of God is never fought the way we think. 
and many times God he also is showing us through this story that the wall wasn't the problem. He needed to build their faith. He needed them to endure in the waiting, in the work of faith, in the waiting of the Lord. And today, even for me and you, our faith will be tested that we can endure and that we can have confidence in God. So the many things that we come across are not the challenge. Here the wall was not the challenge. It was their faith. It was their endurance. It was their their, their, their confidence that needed to be built. And the more they build their faith, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11.30, by faith, no wonder it is written, that by faith the walls of Jericho fell. By faith, my brother, my sister, it is by faith, not by might. It is by faith that we will walk the walk of faith. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around it seven days. And the word of God says that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Bible also says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is in Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God for Whoever would come or draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. God rewarded the children of Israel for waiting upon him. And in conclusion, the strategy for victory as we have seen is what is God saying to you? What, what is the reflection that you carry home today? Are you hearing? What are you hearing? What are you holding on to? What is God saying? What is God asking you to do? Is there obedience? I pray that we shall be found faithful in obeying God. Where is your faith anchored? Is there endurance? Can we endure? What is your seven days like? What does your six days look like? What is that that looks so common? that looks so familiar that sometimes you can be tempted to throw in the towel when the Lord is saying that you listen to what he has said. And finally, where is your faith anchored? Where is your faith anchored? Where is your faith anchored? So I pray that even as we come to the close of this sharing, that we will not be wise in our own understanding and will not put our hope in men. We will not put our hope in the arm of flesh, but in the arm of God. And that we will remember faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that we remember without faith, we cannot please God. I pray that God will give you victory in your life. And whatever it is that you're waiting God for, whatever it is that you're trusting God for, I want to remind you that if we put our faith in God, he is faithful. And let not your heart get weary. Let it not get weary in waiting on God. Let it not get weary in prayer. Let it not get weary in fellowship. Let it not get weary in doing the things of God. Let it not get weary in holding on to God. Let, it, let your heart not get weary even on speaking the word of God to situations that you come up with. May the Lord bless, bless you and keep you. May he give you faith to know that he's faithful and he's a rewarder of those who diligently wait upon him. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the victory that you gave the children of Israel. We thank you that your strategy was not what they expected. It didn't have to take the army. It didn't have to take the, the military. It needed to take obedience. It took the faith in you. Many things that we face, you are testing our faith in you. Help us to trust. Help us to keep our faith in you. Help us to know that you are faithful. Help us to know that you are a God who will do exactly that what you have said. And that your battle is only won your way. Teach us to hear you. Teach us to wait on you. Teach our faith. Teach us to have our faith anchored in you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Thank you, Rev, for blessing us with such a wonderful word. Indeed, Church, I hope that we've been blessed by that word. And now, Church, it's another time to honor God through our tithes and offering. And you know, we say time to give, it's time to be blessed, indeed. Well, our giving channels are on your screen, and so you are encouraged to go ahead and give. The word of God says that a generous giver, indeed. That guy is a friend of God and they're loved by God. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you very much. Thank you for your blessings and your grace. And thank you because, God, through this service, God, we also get to worship you through our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we are giving them, my Father, to you, God, as a way, God, my Father, of sharing, God, with the blessing, my Father, of what, God, you've done. And so, God, may they be worthy and may they be acceptable before you, God, as we give in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Go ahead and give. Go before him and exalt his name. Give him worship. Give him adoration. Express yourself before him. Lord, you are. No other God can be called our Father. No other God can be called a friend no other God can be called redeemer no other God is coming back again no other God say no other God can be called a father no other God no can be called a friend. Can be called a friend. No other God no can, can be called a No other God. No God. One more time.
Church, now we are, we are indeed glad. Thank you for joining us and walking with, with us through until the end of the service. And if you are there, may you share with me the words of the grace. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Great week ahead. <laughs> Come on,